Hi, I'm Tyler Foles. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to major projects to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is to know nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. If you like this video, please leave me a like down below and go and hit the subscribe button to know when more videos like this are coming. If you didn't like this video, uh, please let me know down in the comments as far as what I can do better. I'm always looking to improve. Today we're going to be looking at another Kurzgesagt video on how to terraform Venus quickly. Um, I've already looked at one for how to terraform Mars. Please check that one out if you haven't seen it already. Let's get started. Leaving Earth to find new homes in space is an old dream of humanity and will sooner or later be necessary for our survival. The planet that gets the most attention is Mars, a small, toxic, and energy-poor planet that just about seems good enough for a colony of depressed humans huddled in underground cities. But what if we think bigger? What if we take Venus, one of the most hostile and deadly places in the solar system, a comment about Mars being underground, um, you're very exposed to uh, cosmic radiation on the surface of Mars, so you need to stay underground in order to uh, protect yourself. Um, the, uh, the crust provides an extra layer of shielding that you wouldn't get on Mars otherwise, since Mars doesn't have the same um, magnetic field that Earth has that we take for granted and turn it into a colony. Not by building lofty cloud cities, but by creating a proper second Earth. It might be easier than you think. Venus is by far the hottest planet in the solar system with a surface temperature of 460 degrees Celsius, hot enough to melt lead. This heat is due to the most extreme greenhouse effect in the solar system. CO2 is great at trapping heat, even a rise from 0.03% to 0.04% in Earth's atmosphere is heating up our planet right now. Venus's atmosphere is 97% CO2. <laughs> also, Venus's atmosphere is 93 times denser than Earth's. Standing on Venus's surface would feel like taking a dive about 900 meters deep into the ocean. The pressure would kill you instantly. It's good lord, that was a graphic depiction of happening to that little bird. <laughs> truly horrible place, so why should we even bother? First and foremost, Venus is almost as big as Earth and has 90% of its surface gravity. Surface gravity is a big problem when colonizing the solar system because it's very likely that long stays in low gravity places will have negative health effects. Venus's size means it yes. Mars is only about a third. The moon is about an eighth. Be the second largest habitat in the solar system. A new home for billions of humans and trillions of animals with oceans, lush forests, and a beautiful blue sky. A properly terraformed Venus may be the most pleasant place to live outside of Earth. While we can't exactly terraform Venus today, a slightly more ambitious future version of us could take this project on. It will take a few generations to complete and be a huge challenge like building the Great Pyramids was for our ancestors. But then, it's not like humans have never started projects that took more than a lifetime to complete. Okay, let's do it. Before anything else, we need to cool Venus down and remove the gas that makes up the extremely heavy atmosphere. As mentioned, <laughs> there's a lot of it. Around 465 million billion tons. How do we do that? There are a few options. We could create giant solar collectors powering a huge array of laser beams that heat up. Just like in the Mars video, using lasers. Atmosphere so much that it's blasted into space. Although we would need thousands of times the entire power generating capacity of humanity, and it would still take thousands of years to remove <laughs> the atmosphere. Another way is to sequester the atmosphere, binding the CO2 in different compounds through chemical reactions. We could mine elements like calcium or magnesium on Mercury and shoot them at Venus via mass driver systems, electric rails that make rockets unnecessary on smaller planets. The metals would combine to bind the CO2 into different carbonates basically forever. But the scale makes the whole thing impractical. 
we would need several hundred billion tons of material to sequester the CO2 this way. Seems like a waste of material yeah. that might take too long. An equally ridiculous idea that could actually work is to put Venus in the shade, literally, by constructing a huge mirror to blot out the sun to just freeze the atmosphere. The mirror doesn't need to be complex or massive, just a very thin foil with a little structural support. Building such a large... Is that COVID to scale? <laughs> Interesting. That surface so close to the sun will turn it effectively into a solar sail and push it out of position. So instead of one giant circular object, our mirror will consist of many different pieces. Annular slats of angled mirrors can reflect sunlight from one set of mirrors to the next. Mirrors would be angled, reflecting light from one to another until the light is redirected to the back. That's a cool design. Just like in a periscope, just bouncing it around. Balancing the force on the front and holding them in position. After a few years of getting the infrastructure in place, things start slowly and then escalate. For the first few decades, the atmosphere slowly cools down but stays dense and deadly until after some 60 years it reaches the critical temperature of 31 degrees celsius suddenly the great flood begins on venus as co2 turns to liquid at this pressure and begins to rain down a constant global rainstorm of unbelievable proportions lasting 30 years the pressure and temperature suddenly begin to drop in unison for almost a century puddles turn into lakes and oceans the surface temperature is now minus 56 degrees Celsius, and the pressure has dropped to only seven times the pressure on Earth. Finally, at a really unpleasant minus 81 degrees Celsius, the CO2 oceans begin to free. I love this time lapse showing temperature and the weather pattern changes on the surface. This is very well done. And the rain turns into snow. This leaves us with a frozen Venus covered in oceans as hard as rock and gigantic CO2 glaciers. What remains of the atmosphere is mostly nitrogen at about three times Earth's surface pressure. If you don't mind freezing and suffocating, you can now take a stroll over Venus's surface. But the frozen CO2 remains a bit of a problem. At some point, we want to warm up the planet, but if we do, the CO2 ice will melt and fill up the atmosphere again. Yeah. So we need some way to keep it from doing that. One is to simply cover it all with cheap plastic insulation and cover it up with ground up Venus rock or water oceans. Although some planetary scientists will be very stressed out about us building a new planet containing a potential time bomb like that. That's pretty unstable. A few unfortunately timed volcanoes could melt a lot of CO2 at once and ruin everything. Another obvious solution is to shoot it all out into space and collect it into a small moon for storage and future use. Huh. We can make this more efficient by using mass drivers instead of rockets, but moving all that mass will still be a pretty intense challenge that will take some time to solve. Whatever we end up doing with the atmosphere, to move forward we need water, which we could get from ice moons. Europa, a moon of Jupiter, has twice as much water as Earth's oceans. Now, catching a moon and transporting it through the solar... That's pretty far away from Venus. That's way in the opposite direction, though. ...system is not exactly easy. So instead, it might be easier to cut chunks of ice off Europa with an army of construction drones and shoot them at Venus using more of those mass drivers. Yeah. Space tethers could save us a lot of effort and energy here. We made a whole video explaining how they work, but in a nutshell, cool. they are slings that can take a payload on both ends. On Europa, they do most of the work needed to catapult our ice to Venus. The ice hits the Venus tethers, which gently drop it into the atmosphere, where it falls down as snow. In exchange, the Venus tethers get to catch CO2 ice shot up from below and accelerate it into orbit. We can remove excess nitrogen using this same method to further lower our atmospheric pressure. After a few decades or centuries, Venus would be covered by a nice, shallow, frozen ocean a few hundred meters deep. It would look extremely different from today. A few continents and countless islands have formed. This is beginning to look a bit like our planet. Now the last and most magnificent phase of terraforming begins, making the atmosphere breathable and adding life. First, we need light though, and we need to heat the planet up again. A Venus day is 2,802 hours long, more than 116 Earth days. Wow. So if we just remove our giant mirror, we would grill half of our planet. 
Even without the massive atmosphere, temperatures would reach unbearable levels. The simplest way to create a day-night cycle and let some energy in again is with another set of mirrors to illuminate our continents and melt our water oceans, which would let us completely control how much energy we get and where it goes. The atmosphere is now mostly made up of nitrogen and basically devoid of oxygen. So the first inhabitants will likely be trillions and trillions of cyanobacteria, which can get photosynthesizing and release oxygen. We know that they can quickly turn around the atmosphere of a planet because billions of years ago, they were probably responsible for turning the toxic atmosphere of our young Earth into an atmosphere with enough oxygen for more complex animal life. But not only that, cyanobacteria can fix nitrogen from the atmosphere and turn it into nutrients that can be used by living beings. This way, they will essentially fertilize our dead ocean water and prepare it for more complex organisms. I like their comparison to the primordial Earth, so basically be doing a similar thing, just faster and more controlled. On land, our colonists need to grind down some of the former Venusian surface to make soil for nitrogen-fixing plants to grow on. Eventually, billions of trees would spread, creating large forests covering massive parts of the continents. Venus would turn green. To speed things up, CO2 would be strategically released to supply the plants and cyanobacteria. Areas already covered with plants could get extra daylight from our orbital mirrors, so the plants would be active for most of each day. Maybe we won't have to do this with the same plants and animals we know today. As genetic engineering matures and our understanding of genetics and the machinery of life expands, I love all the little references to other media. They had one of the little fish from Super Mario Brothers and they just had a Pikachu there and it's funny. <laughs> might just engineer life as we need it. All in all, it would take several thousand years to make the atmosphere breathable by humans. In the meantime, you could stroll around with nothing more than regular clothes and an oxygen mask. Settlers would enjoy a vast new planet filled with resources and bathed in sunlight. They might think of new ways to use the vast amounts of carbon dioxide ice and nitrogen orbiting in space above. Industrial processes, rocket fuel, or even boosting the terraforming of another planet like tiny Mars. That's true. If you have all those resources, you can use them to move on to other planets. Venus is fully terraformed. Animals roam through vast ecosystems. Cities are being constructed. Billions of settlers and their descendants make this world their home. They will see images of the past, how Venus was once the most hostile planet around, how it took hundreds of years to freeze hell and to ship in the oceans, and another few thousand years to make it possible to breathe freely. They will barely be able to believe it. Okay, maybe it's not that easy to terraform Venus, and a lot of things must go right for this future to become reality. But it is possible, and with technology that is within the reach of a motivated and slightly more advanced humanity that wants to venture into space. The only thing that's stopping it is our imagination. And that, at least, is a problem that's easy to overcome. If you think about it, your imagination is the only thing stopping... That's really cool, and um, I know it's said quickly, but uh, thousands of years is a lot faster than hundreds of millions or billions of years when it comes to creating a planet. Um, still take many, many generations to pull off, but um, I like how they, they showed all the, uh, all the phases of what it would actually look like, and it's cool that... Um, I think if we eventually do something like this, it would make sense, like it said, to use um, all of the um, all of the frozen CO two, um, all the water. If we end up using Europa to uh, terraform uh, Mars and Venus, as well as building a bunch of other complexes uh, throughout the solar system, it makes sense to kind of do a lot of these projects in parallel, and they can all kind of help each other. Plus, we could even learn things um, for, um, for future reference as, um, as these projects come underway. But, yeah, it's, these sort of videos are just fascinating to me. And it's good to know that our technology really isn't that far off, at least conceptually. Um, it does seem like 
these quickly terraformed planets, both with this one and the one on Mars, that it would be fairly unstable in terms of just a little bit of changes here can have even more of an ad an adverse or a ripple effect to the environment more so than what we're doing right here on earth with uh, global climate change but this is some really fascinating stuff um, again thank you very much for watching i'll see you next time